Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and in this video, I'm revisiting a project from way back in 2016. I can't believe that was seven years ago. Back then, I wasn't making videos and I wasn't sharing building plans. I was just sharing my projects on my website, but the instructions there were not great. But over the years, I've had several people ask me about this particular project and if I ever made actual building plans for it. So after seven years, I thought it would be a good idea to rebuild it. Side note, I do kind of have a rule in my shop that I never build the same thing twice. So this is definitely an exception to my typical rules. Anyway, the good news is that I was able to use my original instructions to rebuild it, but the better news is that I completely rewrote them, created actual building plans for you, and I'm sharing them in the link in the video description. But if you're ready to just dive in and get building, let's go. I feel like so many of these projects start out basically the same. So this process may look familiar if you've been following along for very long. When I built the original cabinet way back when, I actually assembled the side panels from one by sixes and one by fours that I just pocket hole screwed together. But over the years, as you may have noticed, I've started using three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood a lot more often instead of gluing or screwing solid boards together. This just helps avoid messy glue ups and potential issues with wood movement. But of course, if you're building your own stuff, you're free to customize how you'd like. So if you'd prefer solid wood panels instead of plywood, that would work as well. I've detailed the plywood cut diagram for this project in the plans linked in the description below. But first I cut down two side panels and some two by two boards to use for the cabinet legs. I also use my miter saw to cut a taper on the bottom inside corner of the two front legs for an extra detail, which is totally optional. People often ask me about sanding because I don't show it a lot in my videos, mostly because it's just really boring and there's a whole lot of it. So I would be sharing it in literally every video clip. Basically, I sand everything after cutting, before assembling, after assembling, before finish. If there's ever a question of whether I sand something here or there, the answer is almost always yes. So for the rest of this video, just know that there's sanding going on between like every step. I assembled this cabinet with, you guessed it, pocket holes. So I drilled pocket holes along the edges of my two plywood panels. Then I screwed the sides together. Since I tapered the front legs, I made sure to pay attention to how I assembled them so they'd be oriented the right way. Once the side panels were together, I cut three more two by twos to assemble the frame. I attached two at the top and one toward the bottom on the front side of the cabinet. Now, as a side note, when I'm using two by twos, I find that drilling two pocket holes in each end tends to cause splits. So I usually stick with just one pocket hole on each end, but I make sure to use wood glue on them so they don't twist. That's just how I do things. Feel free to use two if you'd prefer. Then I cut and installed a bottom panel into the cabinet before adding the other side. Once the main frame of the cabinet was together, I moved on to adding the dividers. Now the left section of this cabinet will have a door with shelves behind it and the right section will have a drawer at the bottom and open shelving at the top. So basically I just needed a divider to separate the two sides. To do this, I measured, cut and installed two by twos in the center at the top and at the front. I'm forever fighting with the camera to actually build the things and not get my whole arm in the way in the process. Sometimes that means I have to drive screws at odd angles. <laughs> Once the framing was in, I added a plywood divider panel. I installed this slightly off center so that it was flush to the side of the two by twos that the drawer will go on. I use pocket holes and screws on the front, but I use two inch wood screws at the top and the bottom. I face the pocket holes towards the door side of the cabinet so they'll be hidden behind the door in the finished project. Now 
Now the shelves in this cabinet will be adjustable except for the one above the drawer. That shelf will be stationary and I assembled it using a two by two and a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I pre-assembled the shelf before installing it into the cabinet because I just thought that that would make it a little easier since this is kind of a tight space to drive the screws. After I position the shelf assembly in place in the cabinet, I used pocket hole screws to secure it. I had to use a short square drive bit to drive these screws, but a 90 degree attachment would also work as well. After I got the two x two screwed in at the front, I flipped it over and attached the plywood section, making sure to keep it square from front to back. Before moving on to adding things inside the cabinet, I worked on the top panel so that it can be drying before I move on to what's next. Okay, so my wood room is a wreck. Um, I've got a lot of things going on in here, but I've got these boards here. They're about 36 inches long, and I think these were one by tens, or two by tens, I mean. So I can square off these edges and still get about an 18 inch wide top when I glue them together. It's a little over nine right now. So I'm going to glue this up for the top. If you wanted, you could definitely just use plywood for the top. You could double up on the plywood if you wanted um, the one and a half inch thick. There's a lot of ways to make the top. I already have these and I kind of need to get rid of them. So I'm going to use these. I ran these boards through the table saw to square the edges before gluing up, which this is totally optional and it could also be done with a circular saw and a straight edge if you didn't have a table saw. Then I trimmed them down a little longer than I needed my top to be and glued them up. After the glue is dry, I will trim this down to its final size. While that dried, I moved on to the drawer. I recently shared a whole video about installing drawer slides, so if you want more information on that, I've linked it below. But I installed a pair of 16 inch ball bearing drawer slides into the bottom right section of the cabinet so that they were three quarter inch inset from the front edge. Then I built a very basic drawer box. I built the drawer, door, and drawer front from three quarter inch plywood, so I went ahead and cut all of these pieces down to size so that I could edge band them all at once. Okay. So I applied some iron on edge banding. Here's a clip of me applying that from another project. It's pretty much all the same. You just literally iron it on. But I edge banded the top edges of the drawer box pieces. I also cut and edge banded the drawer front. And I also edge banded the edges of the plywood door. So I've got all my pieces edge banded and kind of ready to go but I'm gonna set the drawer front and the door aside and just move on with the drawer box for right now. I cut and assembled a simple drawer box using pocket holes and screws. Not normally I cut dados to install my drawer bottom, but in this case, since this drawer was so small, I just stapled the bottom onto the box. Either way would work fine here. This was just a little quicker. Then I installed the drawer box onto the slides. For the drawer front, I positioned it so that the gaps were even around all the sides, held it tight while I pushed the drawer open from the back side. Then I could just clamp it in place while I drove the screws from the inside. Once the drawer was installed, I removed it from the cabinet using the tabs on the sides of the drawer slides so that it will be easier to finish in a later step. Now let's move on to the door. Okay, so here's my three quarter inch plywood door. I'm just gonna line the outside edge of it with some like, call this lattice trim, but I cut this myself. It's probably about a little over a quarter inch thick. I'm gonna just cut this to fit along each side and along the top. Now, that said, this is an inset door. 
since I'm adding this trim, it's gonna be difficult to get concealed inset hinges to work with this. So if you wanna use concealed hinges, I do recommend going ahead with the like frame and panel door and not the three quarter inch plywood with trim on top or using a half inch thick plywood for the door, but I didn't wanna to have to buy a sheet of half inch plywood just to make the door from. So anyway, I'm gonna use butt hinges. That's what I used on the original with some like brass colored butt hinges and that'll work fine. Again, there's a million ways to do pretty much everything here. So this is what I'm doing in this case, but there are obviously other options. Okay. There are a lot of ways to make a door. You could simply make a flat door and skip this trim altogether, or you could make a shaker style door with a frame and panel. The original design that I built years ago had a shaker style door, so I wanted to replicate that here, but I also wanted to avoid having to cut the dados to make the door. So I did this instead. It looks identical from the front, but it does make the door one inch thick instead of your typical three quarter inches thick. So if you plan to use concealed hinges here, you'll need to find some that will work with one inch thick doors. While the glue dried on the door trim, I pulled the top panel back out to finish and attach it. I trimmed it down to its final size and sanded it well before attaching. I just want to clarify some things here. So I'm attaching a solid wood top onto this like cabinet frame here. And obviously with a solid wood top, you're supposed to allow for wood movement. And I'll be honest, I've done a lot of projects in the past where I did not allow for wood movement. And five, six, seven years later, those projects are still totally fine. I've done things the right way and I've had my tabletops and things crack open still. So take that for what it's worth. Everything always depends. However, if you wanna attach this to allow for some wood movement, there are these like figure eight brackets that are pretty um, common. I've used them in projects on the, in the past. And basically you just drill out like a shallow hole and set this in here and then you attach through the bottom side up into the top. And since these can rotate, that will allow for some wood movement. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is simply to drill some oversized holes through the framing here and attach with screws from the underside. So that way as the wood on the top expands and contracts, it can move inside that oversized holes. It can move inside those oversized holes. And you can just use like a washer or something on the bottom to keep the screw like tight, but still not go through the hole. Or if you just wanted to forget wood movement altogether, you could just screw straight through the framing up into the top. And let's be honest, this is a like little decorative cabinet. So if for some reason down the line, the wood does move and the top develops a crack or something, it's not gonna like burn up in flames. It's just gonna ha maybe have a crack in the top. So it'd still function totally fine. In this case, I think I'm just gonna drill some oversized holes through the framing and I'm not gonna use these, but these are a good option if you want to use them. In my original project from years ago, I didn't bother accounting for wood movement. I just screwed the top in place and it's still working just fine today. However, in this case, I did drill out some oversized holes and use some wood screws with washers so that it's able to move as needed. So this is the side that the door is going on and I didn't think about it, but I needed to drill this hole towards the back side of this so that the door won't interfere with the screw. So just a, an FYI, the oversized hole on this side needs to be drilled further towards the back so that the door won't hit it. Honestly, I would have rather used the figure eight fasteners here, but I didn't have enough on hand, so this worked instead. This cabinet has a little of everything, door, drawer, and shelves. We've covered everything so far, except the shelves, which ironically is the easiest part. I used a shelf pin jig to drill shelf pin holes into the left side of the cabinet and into the top right side. This allows me to use shelf pins to place adjustable shelves where I'd like them later. Now, if you'd like to, you can plug the pocket holes before drilling or take your chances that you won't hit one in the process. I was going to take my chances, but... So 
So I wasn't gonna plug these because I was gonna place the shelves where they would cover the pocket holes and back here it worked perfect. Um, but here, the shelf pin hole was exactly where my pocket hole was. I should have actually drilled these further back. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug the pocket hole with a pocket hole plug here. No big deal. I let the glue dry in the plug while I drilled the rest of the holes. Then I came back to sand and drill the one last hole. The final piece was attaching the back panel, which I cut from quarter inch plywood and simply stapled onto the back side. Oh, and I also cut one by two trim pieces to glue and nail onto the sides for some extra detail. And I also cut shelves from three quarter inch plywood so that I could go ahead and stain the cabinet, the door, the drawer front, and the shelves separately, but all at the same time. The closer you get to the end of a project, the easier I feel like it becomes to forget these last little pieces. <laughs> I stained everything with Minwax Early American and once it was dry, I reinstalled the drawer but not before adding a knob so that I would be able to reopen it again. Don't ask me how I learned that. Then I placed the shelves inside and finally added the door. Now I mentioned this earlier but I just used some simple butt hinges to install the door onto the cabinet. I don't typically use butt hinges in my more recent projects, but I did do this on the original and I thought it kind of fit the style. I also kind of like the black accents here, but if you don't want to see the hinges so plainly, you can still use butt hinges, but just fold them so that they fit into the gap versus on the front of the door. Once the door was installed, I gave the piece a few coats of clear coat and it was finished. I really enjoyed revisiting this project and rebuilding it with just a few simple tweaks. I actually didn't change much about the build seven years later, which is kind of surprising. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but I'm excited to have been able to finally share it in video form after all these years. I really hope you enjoyed watching it come together, and if you'd like to build your own, don't forget to grab the plans linked below. If you can't wait to see what's next, I'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!